so this might have been the most insane week in creative AI. Kling have been on fire recently, and they just released their new motion feature, so we're going to take a dive into that. Plus, Tencent have released a world model. It's that thing where you can generate up a world and go wandering around in it. And get this, it's open source. And with so much going on, we're going to do a quick drive-by of all of the latest releases. I mean, there's a lot going on. Another one just dropped as soon as I hit record. This week is not going to sleep quietly. Kicking off, Kling have been absolutely wrecking shop over the last month. They've released major updates. I, I think I've covered them all, including the 01 multimodal model, the 2.6 video model upgrade, and uh, well, their new avatar feature as well. And while I thought they were taking a knee, they ended up surprising me, releasing a new feature for the 2.6 video model motion control that allows up to 30 seconds of input. Uh, it's pretty great. It does have some quirks though. Before we jump into all that, let's take a quick look at a project that I put together this morning uh, featuring our guy, Captain Renfield, and the Immortal Tears in the Rain monologue from Blade Runner. Uh, to note, a couple of weird morph cuts in this. We'll go over that in a minute. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. Attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion. I watched sea beams glitter in the dark near the Tannhauser Gate. All those moments will be lost in time, like tears in rain. Time to die. Yeah, that is pretty crazy, right? So look, off the top, I will say, yeah, that is really impressive, but also totally riding the coattails of, you know, Rucker Hauer's original performance. But that's also kind of the thing that I keep saying, that AI-generated films are best when they are human-driven. So as a quick run through, of course, there is the original performance underlying all of this that I did have to cut up into some various sections. Uh, you might be asking, well, why'd you have to cut it up to various sections when it takes up to 30 seconds? We'll get to that in a second. After we had our material generated, we of course had to put everything together. That's where those weird morph cuts come into play. I think the most offending one is, is there. Yeah, that one's like my least favorite. Uh, and then of course, there's kind of like the hybrid uh, Deckard me uh, that appears for one cutaway. So taking a look at motion control because as i said it's it's a little bit on the quirky side and definitely not too intuitive as you can see with the many failed generations that i have here um and now you have two uh, essentially inputs here you have uh, a video of your character doing actions to mimic and then on the other side adding in your character image and then importantly uh, a selector down here for choosing the character orientation uh, that matches the video or the core character orientation that matches the image that is the tricky part so on the character orientation matches video side, this is probably best utilized when you're using something like Nano Banana to do direct uh, like style transfers. Uh, for example, taking a three second clip of this man who knows Kung Fu and then providing a reference image taken through Nano Banana with the prompt turn this into dark anime, uh, we ended up with this, which is pretty impressive. Hands look very good, uh, definitely maintains all of the stylistic consistency of our input image. Yeah, this is really good. But if we go in the other direction with it, with character orientation matches image, it fails. So yeah, like I said, it's tricky. Now I'll say, is it perfect? It definitely is not. Uh, for example, taking this shot of Ripley from Aliens, the original flamethrower girl, if you will, and then, re you know, replacing her with our flamethrower girl. We end up with this image from the first frame utilizing uh, Kling 01's uh, elements library. Um, yeah, I mean, that looks pretty solid. Uh, that said, when we run it through video, we end up with this, which, I, look, I'm not going to dog on it too hard. It does come off a little bit on the comedic side, especially with the flames coming in. She's like, oh, that's burning my butt. Um, but, and on top of it, it definitely has like kind of a very like CG-ish look to it. That said, in terms of, you know, actual character motion, it's actually pretty accurate uh, in terms of uh, Ripley's original movement. So yeah, at the end of the day, it is still the 2.6 video model, not the 01 multimodal model that's working here. Uh, as you can see here, I, when I tried to put myself into the uh, Matrix, uh, I know Kung Fu scene, um, there definitely is like some character drift in my face. Briefly swinging back to the matches video versus matches image selector. Uh, apparently, according to the documentation, the matches image does support camera movement. 
I think that might be best illustrated by taking footage of this guy dancing uh, and Tom, uh, I'd use myself, but no one's gonna believe that I dance like that. So as we can see here, running it with matches video, um, the motion does look really good, but as the camera begins to move, like Tom's scale and perspective in the room begins to shift um, and it looks a little unnatural. But if we rerun it with character matches image, um, you do see that we do maintain all of the movement. The camera itself just has a little more like free movement within the environment. So currently I'd say this is a feature that you can get some really good stuff out of. Uh, you can also get a lot of broken stuff out of it. On the plus side, actually they do refund you every time like a generation does not work. So you can feel free to experiment because there is a lot of cool stuff that you can get out of this. Uh, turning over to some community outputs, Wusha Rocks gives us this action running sequence. Uh, this is our input video here and the input image here. Take a look at it. I mean, that's a solid generation. Prompting for something like this with the running and the camera movement, I mean, that would be really difficult to pull off. Longtime friend of the channel, Uncanny Harry showcases here. Again, kind of the thing that I'm most excited about here is, you know, the bringing the human element into AI video generation. You've gone through the looking glass and out the other side. Where are we going now? Who knows? Well, I do know is this going to be <laughs> I'll see you on the other side, brother. I do love in this part of the video where he opens his mouth and the model decides she's going to stick out her tongue. I mean, I just, that to me is endlessly fascinating, kind of that collaborative effort between, you know, an AI generation and a human performing actor. So as I've been saying for a while, start a folder up with your roster of AI generated characters because this is just the beginning. Moving on, you don't need Genie 3. We have Genie 3 at home. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor, Adobe. You know, one of the most interesting use cases for AI video right now is for small business advertising. Helping people who make things tell their story without needing a full production team. So today I've partnered with Adobe to test exactly how you can do that with Firefly's AI video generator. So let's just say we've got a small boutique electric guitar maker since you know I do have all of these guitars here. Uh, let's call them Tim Tone guitars. And well, we're, we're gonna pretend that I'm a world-class luthier and I build handcrafted custom instruments. But I also probably don't have the budget or the time to shoot a full-on commercial. But what if we could do that with Adobe Firefly? So let's make an ad for Tim Tone guitars using prompts, a few product shots, and Firefly's video generator. No camera, no crew, just me and the browser. So let's just start off with a quick text to video prompt. And you can see right away that it starts building out full motion shots that look like they came from a real shoot. And the nice thing here, everything generated through Firefly models is trained on licensed Adobe stock and public data. So it's commercially safe, meaning you can use it in a paid campaign without worrying about rights or copyright issues. Now, let's say we've got a few product shots like hero shots of the guitars themselves. Well, we can just drop that in and use the image to video module to animate it, add a bit of camera motion, lighting change, and maybe even a light rotation to make it feel like studio B-roll. That is where Firefly is kind of brilliant. It adapts to whatever content you already have. It can animate images, create lifestyle footage, even add motion graphics automatically. And because it's part of the Adobe ecosystem, everything you generate can move straight into the apps you already use. Head into Premiere for additional video editing and polished results. Use Photoshop for your static images and ads if you need a little extra polish. Or jump into Express for quick and easy text overlays, video edits, and animations. So just to recap why this is such a strong option for creators and businesses, the Firefly model is designed to be commercially safe for your business. It's integrated working seamlessly with the tools you already use like Premiere and Photoshop, and it's versatile. You can generate video from simple text prompts or animate from your existing static photos. That all took maybe three minutes with Firefly's video generator, and I didn't have to spend hours lighting a set or even picking up my camera. If you want to try it yourself, you can go to firefly.adobe.com. It is free to start. And again, completely commercially safe and one of the most practical uses of AI video so far. Adobe Firefly is the AI video generator built for small business advertising. 
So yeah, Tencent have dropped High World 1.5 World Play, which is uh, a streaming video diffusion model that enables real-time interactive world modeling with long-term consistency. So this really is closer to what Google has showcased with Genie 3 than say something like the Gaussian Splat approach that World Labs Marble took. High World will generate either from text or from image and essentially create streaming video of that world, which is, I don't know, like I, I know I've said that a couple of times this year, still that's that's kind of insane. It will also do third person perspective results, which is kind of fascinating. It's the first time we've actually seen this in action and it is available now. Although I, I mean, I do have to say that it is running a bit on the slow side here. Um, this is a detectives, you know, nor detective office. Of course, I'm gonna prompt that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of working. Um, Looks like we got some actually water on the, uh, we've got some rain on the light there. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, it's it's kind of on the slow side in terms of like, you know, this is definitely not a Twitch shooter that you're gonna be playing anytime soon, um, but it is pretty fascinating. You essentially get about a minute's worth of movement before um, the demo boots you out. So we're just rounding out on that now. We didn't get very far in the, our detective's office, did we? So we are definitely not solving any cases at that speed, but you know, overall it is cool just to see essentially what uh, the promise of Genie 3 looks like. But again, it is open source, meaning that, you know, you can probably get longer and faster generations depending on how much RAM you throw at it. Um, the system requirements are actually fairly low. So uh, it's just an NVIDIA GPU uh, with 14 gigs of GPU memory, uh, which uh, that sounds a little low, doesn't it? Chances are, if you're coming at it with a 14 gig card, uh, you know, performance will probably be very similar to what we just saw. But, you know, I mean, if you've got a monster machine, I'd be curious to see what the results would be then. At the very least, I'm sure that we'll see one or two platforms picking this up and just having it available to run. Um, needless to say, world models, I think are gonna be a very big thing next year. Moving on with some quick hits. Uh, earlier this week, OpenAI, of course, released their Image 01 model, uh, which was, sitting at the top of the leaderboard charts as like the image model to beat. I will say that the overall vibe check across the community does seem that it's it's actually lagging behind Nano Banana still. I haven't had a ton of time to spend testing on this, but I mean, even just a simple thing, like why don't we have 16.9 still, Sam? Like, why is it still 3.2? I did find this funny when trying to utilize it to create a thumbnail for uh, the last video that we did, um, that uh, it decided to put the OpenAI logo at the top. Meanwhile, Nano Banana provided this with an output, essentially the same prompt, uh, different stupid thumbnail face though. But yeah, between the two, I mean, I have my preference. At the same time, I'm not gonna bag on it too hard as I really haven't gotten a chance to really dig into it. Um, that said, I, again, my, main, my major complaint at this point is, why no 16.9 still? In the meantime, uh, if you have some really great use cases, uh, please let us know down in the comments. Moving on and dropping just as I hit record on this video, uh, Luma Labs have released Modify for Ray 3. Uh, this is of course in painting um, restylization, uh, the ability to character ref into a video um, with start frames and end frames. Yeah, I mean, overall this, it's looking pretty good. Uh, always been a big fan of Luma Labs and you know the Ray model. So so I'm definitely curious to check this one out. Um, yeah, uh, definitely be spending some time with this coming up pretty soon. Just really nice to see Luma closing out the year with a bang. Moving on, Viggle have released kind of like a sort of an insane thing uh, called Fight Anyone. So this allows you to upload a character. In this case, of course, we did Flamethrower Girl. Um, and then, yeah, we can, we can battle with her. So um, let's go ahead and come into this. It's very much like a, like, I mean, Street Fighter-esque game, I guess. Um, so yeah, once you have your character loaded in, all you need is one image. Um, you load into the game and battle mode begins. I mean, is it janky and silly? Yeah, it is janky and silly, but it's also kind of stupid fun. Um, I mean, controls are really, really basic and, uh, oh, well, our guy uh, just did a special attack on us there. Um, oh, but he missed. Um, and now, Here's my special attack. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, dopey, silly, but sort of fun. I mean, I don't know, maybe something to show the family around the dinner table during the holidays, or maybe not. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know. Kudos to Viggle for just releasing something kind of insane and fun. So that's it for today. I'll definitely be back before the holidays kick in. Um, again, there's still like a ton of stuff to cover and I do definitely wanna check out uh, the new modify feature in Luma. So uh, yeah, I'll see you very soon. As always, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.